This video covers everything from a simple one line hook all the way to a hook that will completely revolutionize how you do forms. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And in this video, I'm gonna do that by showing you five amazing React hooks. You're gonna notice on the left here, we have actually 20 hooks listed out. That's because I've already covered the first 15 in three other videos. I'll link them at the end of this video and in the description for you. In this video, we're gonna be covering the last five, 16 through 20. And the first one I wanna talk about is the use media query hook. So one of the big complaints with React is that if you want to do styles based on different sizes, you can't actually write media queries inside of the style tag for your JSX, and you need to do that in CSS. But with this use media query hook, you can actually write media queries that are going to render out JavaScript code. So you can run JavaScript based on the result of a media query, which is perfect for making styles based on media queries or doing entirely different things when the screen size changes. So let's look first at this use media query hook and this media query component. You'll see the component is super simple. We call the hook and we pass it in the media query. In our case, the min width of 200 pixels. So it's going to return true if this media query is true or false if it's false. So we say is large and we're just printing that out right here. So large is either gonna be true or false if our screen is big enough or not. So if we shrink down the size of our screen, you can see large changes to false. And if we increase the size of our screen, you can see large now says true. So let's look at the implementation for this hook because it's actually really quite straightforward. You can see we pass the media query in and then we have a simple state variable for checking the match and we can set the match and then we have something called a media query list which i'm going to talk about in just a second inside this use effect so anytime the media query that we pass into our hook changes we want to rerun this and all we do is we say window.match media and we pass it in the media query this is essentially an api built into the browser and this is going to watch for a media query and it's going to say okay does this thing match the media query and that's going to return to us this list this list is what we're saving in this media query list. And then we're just saving if the list is a match, it has this match property. And that's going to happen great the first time. When we call match media, it's gonna say, does our screen currently match this media query or not? That's what this list.match does. But we need to make sure we can actually see what happens when we change our screen size, is the media query still going to match? So we can set up an event listener on change and that's going to say, hey, anytime that this window.match media query changes from true to false, or from false to true, we want to run some code. In our case, we want to set is match equal to that match variable. So we just wanna say, hey, if it's now true, save it to true. If it's false, save it to false. And this use event listener is a hook we actually created in one of the previous videos, which I'll have linked in the cards and description for you. Essentially, all this hook does though is set up an add event listener on our media query list that waits for the change event to be rendered. This is a super straightforward hook that allows you to have tons of possibilities from everything from like prefers reduced motion all the way to doing like large versus small screen sizings. Now the next hook I want to talk about is the use geolocation hook. So let me just comment that hook in and we're going to open up the code for that hook so we can look at it. And we're just going to look at the component first. As you can see, it's a really straightforward component. You can see it says geolocation component. It has a loading an error state as well as some data, for example, latitude, longitude, and we just call it with no options at all. Then you can see we get our loading and our error printed out to the screen and our latitude and our longitude being printed out to the screen right here. Now, if we go to the use geolocation hook, you're gonna see that this hook takes in an optional options parameter, which we're gonna see in just a little bit. And we have state for our loading error and data, which is just the information being returned from the hook. So pretty straightforward. Then we have essentially one giant use effect that is all of the rest of our hook. This use effect is just going to run anytime the options we pass in change. So if we have new options being passed in, it's going to cause this hook to run again. And all this hook does is on success, we're going to set loading to false. We're going to set our error to null, and we're going to get the coordinates from our data and save that as our data. So that's like our latitude and our longitude, as well as a few other things if you want them as well. In our error, we're just going to set our error and we're going to set our loading to false as well. And then down here, we're going to say, hey, Give me the current position of the person on success to call the success on error, call error, and then pass it in any options that we want to pass to this geolocation method. Then what I want to do is I want to watch for the position of the user to see if it changes. So this is going to give me their current position. And then the second one is almost exactly the same, but it's going to update me every single time the user's position changes. And then down here, we're just going to clear out that. So we're no longer watching them. If for some reason our options change, we're just going to clear it out and rewatch them with a new handler. This is going to get us the current position and it's going to constantly update us with their new position every single time it changes, which is amazing. So this right here, all we have is just these really simple states right here of loading error and then our data. And it's going to constantly update us with new data every single time that the user's position changes. 
Now, like I said, this is perfect for any mapping style application. I'm sure you can think of hundreds of ways that you would use this hook. And the great part is, is you can just write it all in one hook like this, get all of the complicated code out there, and then just use this one, you know, single simple line to use that code. Now, the next hook I want to talk about is a hook that's really going to revolutionize how you deal with state and forms. And that's this use state with validation. So let me just uncomment that so we can see what's going on. And we're going to go into the component itself. So you can see we have this use state with validation hook and we're passing it in a function. Our function just says name and we want to see if the name's length is greater than five. And we're passing in this second parameter as well, which is just like the default value. So think about like a normal use state, but on top of passing in the value, you also pass in here in a validation function that's going to run and give you a true false is valid value. So you can see we get our value and our set value just like a normal set state but now we also have this valid variable as well. So right here you can see is valid is set to false by default, and that's because our name is a default of an empty string and we need it to be greater than five characters. So if I start typing and I get longer than five characters, you can see valid then changes to true. And this is amazing because doing all this validation is kind of a pain, but if you can wrap it all up inside of one hook like this, it makes working with forms so much easier and you don't have to worry about holding all of that state and all that information inside of this component because the hook does it all for you. Now, if we look at the hook, the hook itself is also pretty straightforward. Again, we take that function we pass in, our validation function and our initial value. And then what we're going to do is just create a state based on our initial state. So that's just using normal use state. And then we're just using some state for our validation. So we're just gonna call that function with our initial state to see if it starts out valid, true or false. Then we're just creating a simple callback. And this callback is going to be for on change. So every time that we want to set our state, we're going to be calling this on change function and it's going to work just like a normal set state so it's going to take in our next state if it's a function we call it and that's just because set state can take a function or a value so we're either going to call it as a function or as a value then we're going to call set state with the result and we're just going to take the result and we're going to say hey is this valid or not and then we return all this information down here our state our setter and then is valid or not this just has the intermediary step of updating our is valid every single time we change our state to see is it valid now, is it valid now, and so on. So it's going to change between true and false every single time we change our state. Honestly, this hook alone makes dealing with state and validation so much easier, so I highly recommend you use this in your projects. Now, the next hook I want to talk about is going to be a little bit more of a simpler one, and this is called the use size hook. So let me just uncomment the code for that. We're going to go and set a use size here, and we're going to look at the component first. So this component is just a real simple component that has a reference right here, which is going to reference our text area. And then we say use size and we pass in the reference. So whatever we want to get the size of, we're passing that ref inside of our use size hook. And then we're getting our size here and we're just stringifying it. So you can see we get our position X, Y, width, and so on. And if we just expand this out, we'll just make it a little bit bigger so we can kind of see what's going on. And you can see as we change this, you can see you know, the width and the height properties are being changed, the right and bottom are being changed, all the information for our size is being changed dynamically as we update the size of this text area. So let's real quickly go and look at what this hook is doing. It's pretty straightforward. As you can see, we just have a size variable which is storing our state, which we return down here. And then we have a use effect that's just saying, hey, if we have a reference, that's cool, use the reference. And then we want to create a resize observer. And this is going to essentially run code every single time something that we're observing changes and we're just going to get that entry and we're going to get the content rect which is just all the information you see here x y width height and so on and we're just going to set that as our size we want to observe the thing that we are currently watching which is our reference and then every time that we're done we just want to unobserve so we're just going to disconnect our observer so it stops observing everything Super straightforward code, a few lines, but it's kind of a pain to write this out every single time you need to check the size of something. So just using it as a simple use size hook is the perfect solution in my opinion. Now this last hook I wanna talk about is that really simple one line hook that, you know, it may not seem like it's that great, but just having this, you know, nice little small quality of life thing is really nice. So we have this use effect once component. And all you've seen inside of here, we have a count, we have a set count, and we have a use state here. And all we're saying is use effect once alert high. So we're saying we just want to alert high one time. As you can see, it's alerted high over here. And no matter how many times I change this value, it's never going to re-alert high. And that's because we're just using a simple use effect with no parameters inside of it. So we just have an empty array here. So it's just running our use effect and it's never running it again because it's only running it one time. Super straightforward one line hook, but it's just kind of a nice quality of life hook to have because you don't have to remember to include this empty array every single time. Now, if you enjoyed this video, you're definitely going to love the other videos I made on this topic. They're all going to be linked over here and down in the description below. So thank you very much for watching and have a good day.